from this computer. Okay, so we're going to talk about probability of events and um, Bayes' theorem and uh, conditional probabilities and stuff like that. So whenever you do this, these are uh, working on something called a, a, a probability or contingency table. So these are tables that we have that we can put events on. Um, so for instance, uh, let me look up some basic stats. Uh, I can just make stuff up on the fly. Actually, you know, I can do this. Uh, the wins versus wins and losses and division. So I follow the St. Louis Cardinals. So I'm going to do wins, losses, uh, in division, outside of division. And this is just numbers that I am looking up. Hopefully I can find. Um, usually baseball or sports in general are really good at finding stats for because there are people like me who like doing stuff like this. Um, so the Cardinals have actually won. What's this? So they've won a total of 80 games and lost 69. They're not going to give me stats. I'm currently going through MLB.com and looking for how many games they've won in the conference, not regular season, usually opposition. So, you know. They have, I could do that, that'll work. Instead of doing in division and out division, I could do home and away. So home, they've won 42 at home and 33 away. Or lost 33 and away they have 38 and 36. <coughs> so in here, when we set these up, we will have events that happen uh, so I could count how many total home games they've had uh, when I do this I usually end up not knowing this information and you could just essentially add up so you use sum of numbers to get our totals so sum of these get your totals sum total and some total. And then these should all add up to be the same amount. 35, 74, 149 games they've played. Um, so what you could ask a couple different questions and this is kind of what we're talking about. So basic of probability, is that um, number of successes, I'm gonna go ahead and put successes in quotes, number of times I want an event to happen versus the total number. So on these tables, this is always gonna be your total number. Um, if you're talking about for everything. There's sometimes that doesn't happen and we'll talk about that later. So <clears throat> our total, which I can just copy, equals this cell, 149. So I might ask myself, uh, what is the probability that if the Cardinals win, 
they will be at home. So what I'm looking at is a point where the Cardinals win at home. Uh, so I go to Cardinals win here. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. And at home here. And where they intersect, that is the information that I want. Oh, I should probably say not if they win, if the Cardinals play a game. These are very important what they're, they're asking because it changes what you're asking. They will win at home. So in this case, I can, I'm looking at everything that's wins, losses, home and away. Those are all possible outcomes. Uh, so home win is 42. So the probability would be 42 divided by 149 or 28.19-ish percent. So 29% of all the games that they've played have been a home win. Uh, so one of the things I end up doing when I do these is I'll have my actual count table here, and then I'll have a probability table, which is pretty close to the same thing, except instead of these numbers, change these to no font, no fill. I will go ahead and figure out the probability of each of these happening individually. <clears throat> so remember when you have something like this, you wanna make sure that that D5 in our case is has the um, dollar signs around it so it stays the same. Uh, and the fun thing about this is I could do copy and paste this down and it changes the cell address for the beginning. So D4, B4 right here is away when B5 is total wins. And if I had them all highlighted, I can go over like this. And it will copy C3, C4, and C5 up here. D3, D4, and D5. But I don't really care about D5, so I just read this, uh, delete it. And if you want, you can change these into percents here, and you can give decimal points to get the right answer for your program, which is nice. So this is your base percentage of home wins, away wins, home loss, away loss. Times the percent chance of being at home, percent chance of being away, percent chance of a win, percent chance of a loss. Very basic information. What ends up happening here is a couple of things called Bayes' theorem. Uh, if I could spell T H E O, I didn't spell right, R E M, and conditional probability. Um, so, Bayes' theorem is technically the conditional probability. <coughs> So to do this, we have to know some basic things. So we have, well, to do Bayes' theorem and conditional probability, we have to have two events, A and B, two basic things. So A is probability, so um, A is uh, event A, B is event B. From there, we'll have to do probability of A, given B, so if B happens, then what's the probability of A? Then you have probability of B 
given a. So if a happens, then what is the probability of b happening? <clears throat> then you have to have, know the probability of a and probability of b. B of B. And it helps if I could spell. B P R O B A B I L I T Y. There we go. And all this is kind of leading up to um, a weird, funky formula. So the probability of A given B <coughs> is equal to probability of B given A times the probability of A, and all that's divided by the probability of B. So you can see we kind of did some of this before. So we have all the probabilities of each independent event right here, which is going to be the probability of A here, or the probability of B. Um, you can also have them as totals here. So these are your probability of A happening. So um, this will be the probability of B happening. These ones inside can be manipulated to be the probability of A or B happening. And I'll show you how. So for this is a general, we can move this to another table or another sheet, we'll make bigger. So we have that same base contingency table here, except I'm going to get rid of all the colors, no fill. So to do base theorem or conditional probability, we'll have to do, a, to do it kind of cheaty for the way I do it, to do a couple different things. So we have probability of A that we have to figure out, probability of B, and then probability of B given A, or probability of A given B. So probability of A happening would be the top here. So for these, we care about the totals only for A and B. So we have <clears throat> the probability of a win is 80 here divided by 149. Probability of a loss would be either, uh, so you have to be careful because you have, this is on a two by two table. You might be tempted to do one minus your probability of A. If you only have two, that's fine. If you have three or four, <clears throat> say I'm in a sports mood, don't know why, but if I'm doing EPL or another football or soccer league, you have wins, losses, and ties. You can't just do one minus in something like this. So it's easier, at least I've found it easier, to just calculate each one independently because then you make fewer errors. <clears throat> so this will be the probability of A. Uh, so the probability of B is a probability of there will be A, B, I, L, I, T, Y. In fact, it's why well, I am really not spelling good today.
And by the way, unless uh, on your writing, unless it's really, truly bad, I usually don't look at spelling because I can't spell half the time either. Oh, so the probability of B is probability of home or away. So the probability of home would be 75. So equals the 75 value divided by 149. <coughs> the probability of away is equal to 74 divided by 149. And then we have to worry about probable of uh, P of B given A <coughs> itself. <coughs> so this depends on what A is. So we're gonna do this into wins and losses because it's asked, it could be either one. So if we take wins here, when you're looking at the probability of B given A, what you're looking at is the fact that wins, the win has already occurred. So I wanna know, uh, let me move this up one. Is is it a home win or is it an away win? Because I know the win has occurred. That is given. But what is the probability of the win happening at home versus the win happening at away? And I had to use the total of the wins to calculate that probability. So that's 42 divided by 80. So 52.5 for a home win and away divided by total. <coughs> so that's my probability of a win given the fact you're home, probability of win given that you're away. No, A is wins if you're looking at wins. You could also have a probability of B of B given A for losses. You what it is is the question will stipul stipulate whether you're dealing with a win or a lose. It's a probability of event B, which is home and away given A occurring. So copy, actually I can just copy all three of these because I'm being lazy. So it's looking at your losses at home divided by your total and your wins at home given your total. <coughs> and you could do the same thing for a given B. So this would be win, loss, given home, so if you're at home, you'd have 42 and 33 for a total of 75. Then you can calculate your total. Equals this divided by this equals this divided by this at 56 and 44 percent or this whole thing and just copy paste and do away 33 and 36 and get your same values so how how do you use this you have a question like See, here's an example. Sorry. Just 
want to make sure that I have a good example worked out. Do -do. So, given that the Cardinals won the game, what is the chance that they were at home? So, this is very close to the question we'd asked before. But because we had to use this formula right here, A given B we can figure out the probabilities. So we have some of this stuff calculated over here. So B given it A. So we we're looking at won the game <coughs> at home. So B given A here of wins at home. So we want to have the probability right here. Uh, I guess I so that's probability of B given A. And we need a probability of A, probability of B. So the probability of A of a win is equal to this right here. <coughs> And the probability of a away game, uh, sorry, to do the home game is this right here. So the probability of a given B is going to be equal to this times this divided by this, or 0.56, which, by the way, is what this is over here. The reason that this works out and the reason they make you do this is because you're not always going to have this full table. And you could use this to calculate things inside of it. Which I'm sorry. Um, does that pseudo make sense? So an example from homework, because that's what people are going to care about. I'm under no illusions. We have, and I'm going to, I see this, and I'm just going to copy and paste and then change numbers. Is we have a restaurant here. I have four, multiple restaurants here. Call them what you will. They can't name them. I'm going to change numbers. So let's call these uh, Sonic. Bees, Taco Bell, and uh, it really doesn't matter. I just kind of made things up. Um, so I have these four restaurants, and I have how many times the order was accurate versus non accurate. So, a question they're going to ask you on your homework because I'm using a homework question and I'm changing numbers. Uh, so assume that orders are randomly selected from those on the table. Uh, if I get three different orders are selected, <clears throat> what is the probability that they all are from restaurant C? 
So on this one, I have to calculate the total number of orders from each one. So I'm just gonna cheat. And make my table. So I'm gonna add up all my orders from each restaurant, all my orders, whether they're accurate or not accurate, and add them up. So they wanna know <clears throat> what is the probability of getting three orders from the same restaurant? Let's call Taco Bell. So I need to find the probability uh, that an order came from Taco Bell three times. So the probability of Taco Bell is going to be equal to this 252 divided by my total. <clears throat> so we have a 22% chance of getting a Taco Bell order randomly from this. So if I have the probability of this happening three times, if P T B times P T B times P T B. So I take this number as times three or times itself three times and I find out my base probability. So I have about a 1% chance of selecting three bags in a row that are Taco Bell. <clears throat> So other ones and ones of people who are working in healthcare. One second. Dogs are barking. Let me do that. I'm going to pause recording. The ones that will probably concern more people who are especially born into healthcare are um, false, positive, false, negative, those types of questions. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we have, <clears throat> uh, so this is, if people are following along, this is like question 24 um, on the homework is, uh, this is uh, for tests for marijuana use. So of course, this is everyone's favorite subject. So we have 145 people. We have um, a test result. So you can have a positive test. Or you can have a negative test. And your actual result or actual condition is you can be positive or negative. So a, so on this question you have, um, we're gonna call it 100, uh, we'll have to have totals for everything. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. So it's gonna, it's gonna give you something like this question says 145, we're gonna do 150 people who have a positive test results. And then it's gonna tell you there are 20 people in this one. <clears throat> we're gonna count at 30 people who have false positives. So that would mean you have a positive test result, but you did not actually have it. Um, at this point, you can cal calculate this, it's called a true positive, a positive result when you actually have the condition. So it'd be, on this case, 150 minus your negative. Uh, on this one, it gives you uh, negative results. So let's do 155. And then it says there are two false negatives. So that is a negative test when you are actually positive. And then to find the true negatives, you take your total 
minus your false negative. So on this, uh, let me just do this in our dice. You'll have false positive, false negative. Those are your two things that you can put in based on this. Uh, so totals are calculated by just adding up all your values. Two numbers above, sorry. And then you'll have your total. Uh, <clears throat> you'll have, so this is your grand total. You're going to have your total of people who either used or didn't use. Uh, then you'll actually have people here, the people who didn't use, whether or not they tested positive or not. So this, it, this is actual people, what they actually did this way down. <clears throat> this right here is what the testing says itself. So let me see, I'm trying to make sure I get this. Oh, me, so I'm trying to do this in my head real quick because I'm not showing you the actual answer. So at this point, you could go and kind of steal this stuff right here. Um, uh, and calculate all your values. So probabilities. Negative. negative. So equals 120 divided by the 305. And then I can, I'm going to pseudo cheat and put this dollar signs around here so I can copy and paste everything. And that would give you, um, your base percentages as decimals into what people did and didn't use. And that's base probability using these tables. Here, I'm just. <clears throat> um, so that's one of the main things is this whole the idea of probability and what's likely to happen or not and how it works. Um, any other questions you want me to go over? There's a, there's a lot of these tables. <clears throat> 